Hi, this is Todd Christel, and today we are going to be talking about manifests. This is the second of three videos that will culminate in the in um, using the Connect code that we wrote in the Follow Me program into a service that can be used in VPL. And so, at the beginning, manifests confused me a lot. Now I'm maybe only slightly confused. Um, I didn't really understand what their role was. Uh, VPL or Robotic Studio actually is a uh, is a collection of programs that uh, that that coordinate through messaging through uh, SOAP envelope messaging. Um, a normal program is uh, has got a, lo a lot of methods and, and a lot of classes, let's say, and and you compile them into one big application, and they all intercommunicate with each other because they've been compiled together. V Robotic Studio uh, instead splits, decouples those activities into things called services, and then it uses a messaging protocol to to exchange. Uh, uh, information between those services. Um, the way that this is all tied together is through the manifest. It really defines the message paths and all the partners in the conversations that are required to make the program work. And so manifests are are very important. So uh, this is going to be a, just a real quick introduction to, to manifests. So here we go. When you type in your, uh, at the DSS prompt, when you type in the edit command, um, actually you are running a Windows command file that starts a DSS node uh, couple, on a couple of ports, uh, 50,000 and 50,001 by default, and then it runs a manifest. This manifest is in a, another, uh, it's in um, samples config in Robotic Studio, and it looks something like this. Uh, it's an XML file, and uh, as you can see, it's it, it, if you're not used to XML files, it could be a little overwhelming. Um, as you read through it, you can kind of see, oh, let's see, oh, we have robot dashboard and drive. Um, we have robot dashboard and depth cam. And this was one of, you know, in the forum, somebody asked, how do I make a basic eddy? Uh, configuration. I don't want the dashboard. I don't want the connect. I just want I just want Eddie in there. Uh, but you can see here's the the definitions for uh, uh, for those things that that maybe they didn't want to have in. Um, there's uh, the parallax reference controller um, platform and uh, um, serial com service. And anyway, so th this is what the manifest looks like directly in XML. If you just double click on it, it'll come up in Explorer and show you that. However, there's a much easier way and a much more intuitive way to do this. And uh, this is called the, it's the uh, DSS Manifest Editor. And it's, that it comes with Robotic Studio. And it looks a lot like VPL when you, when you open it up. And so let's go and, um, and, and look at that same file using the Manifest Editor. So we open it. It will bring you automatically to the samples config file. Uh, where all the manifests are stored, and there is Eddie Manifest. Open it up, and you can see this is much easier than the XML. Um, it, 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 I mean, it's visual. It's, it's. You can see we got the robot dashboard, and it, it's uh, drive uh, talks to the Mark robot. The uh, depth cam is associated with the connect, the webcam and the connect, the sensor arrays are Mark Robot, and as we move down, we see Mark Robot um, has uh, an I.O. controller drive, which is the uh, differential drive, and that says it belongs to the parallax platform, as well as the, uh, the input-output pins for the ping sensors. Um, so anyway, so, th so, so this, is, this is definitely preferable. So we want to build that, let's say we want to build that simple Eddy service that all it does is it'll, it'll let the Eddy robot run and doesn't bring the connect to the robot dashboard in. Um, so when, when I erase that, now here's something that caught me, caught me for a while. Uh, you notice that the, the tab and, and the stuff went away at the top. And if, if we go here and try and drag something in, um, I'll just grab it hard enough there, and, and nothing, nothing will go into the workspace. So what you have to do is you have to actually define a new. 
because there's two kinds of uh, two ways to do this. You can have everything running on the same machine, or because you have decoupled those services and you're using essentially an HTTP protocol to communicate between the services, you can have different parts of this running on different physical machines. And so we have a distributed a application. Um, and we're not doing that, at least I'm not at this point. So we're going to open up just a simple DSS manifest. So, um, if you remember that hierarchy, uh, it kind of started out with Mark. And if you remember, Mark was the uh, Microsoft's uh, specification, generic specification for a robot. It stands for Mobile Autonomous Robot with Connect. Uh, so, we're going to start with Mark. And uh, you can see, I have a few things I've done in here. Those don't, though you won't see some of these uh, drive distance, things like that. You won't see those in, in your uh, application. So we have, here's the, and I'm using the user mark robot in state, in case I want to go in and recompile it. I, when I recompile, it always recompiles to the user version, not the other version. So, um, so reference IO controller drive so uh, and then the ADC pin array and if you remember that was the parallax IO reference platform 2011 the world's longest service um, we grab it and we bring it in here and it turns into a plus that means it belongs somewhere we'll drop it on there just like we saw uh, in the XM or in the when we brought up the Eddy manifest, and um, something very interesting happens as soon as we bring it in there, it knows that it needs to be at more of a top level. It needs, you know, if I'm referencing it, it needs to exist there, and so it brings it in there automatically for me, and then brings in a dependency that it has, and so so th this program is taking care of us. Uh, we still don't have the ADC pin array. It might not be part of this parallax platform. But it is in this case, and 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 it knows that it it says, do you want to add a new instance, or do you want to have, do you want to add the current uh, I/O controller platform? You could have multiple eddies running around, and you want to split the um, uh, the ping from the infrared for some reason. Um, so the flexibility is there. We don't want to do any of that. We just want to use the same one because that won't it won't work otherwise. And you can see the serial com service needs something. And so what it needs is it needs it doesn't have a top level uh, partner. So if you go to serial com, I typed in serial and came up with serial com service. Bring it around there. That is now happy, and it brings up the serial com service as a as a top level service. So uh, this is really it. This is all you need. You can save this off under you know a, a name that that makes sense to you, and then when you write, write a VPL program and you use either the Mark specification as a service or the parallax io controller as a service in your programs you can when, when you have to put a manifest on it you can use this manifest and it'll bring up just the bare bones for you um, oh one last thing here serial com service uh, does need configuration um, de dependent on, on your particular computer uh, if you click on it you have a, a settings over here uh, you can create the initial state, and this is where you, you put in things like the baud rate, uh, COM3, COM5, whatever it is, how fast you're communicating. Uh, there's no uh, no parity, uh, one stop, one uh, or eight data bits, uh, one stop bit, things like that. Uh, that it, Make sure it's a asynchronous, uh, probably connected, it's, all, it's always connected, and uh, and, and configure your comm service there. And then that'll build a configuration file too for you. So anyway, that's it. I hope this helps. And the next video will be, we'll bring the first two together and we'll create the service.